Okay. Our sacred duty. And that's to vote, isn't it? But I had run across some things uh, that I wanted to share with you this evening. Uh, Romans 13, verse 1. Y'all all read these scriptures in the past, but we're going to read them again, the Lord willing, together. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing the Romans said, Romans 13, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are, or that be, are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the proud, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the powers? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, whom custom, fear to him to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And then 1 Timothy 2, we'll read beginning verse 1. I exhort therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, given of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will allow all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Okay. Occasionally we have election time, it's drawing near now. And I'm not sure when the election is, but I know that we've got fellows running for different offices. Uh, mayor specifically here in Houston. Uh, and I saw yesterday where the 22nd Democrat candidate had climbed into the race uh, for president for the, this next year. Well, we get to choose and we want to serve over us. Uh, but as we consider that, we must be subject ourselves to higher powers, and we are. God instructs us to. And leaders are intended to protect us. But y'all feel safe. <laughs> I said that jokingly. Uh, because of some of the leaders it looked like we have. But verse 6 that we read a moment ago, if you will, back up there. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. They are God's ministers. He uh, put them in office, and we need to respect their office, don't we? I don't know about y'all, but I feel a little safer when I can get on the phone and call the police. Not that I have to call them, but they're there in case I need to. However, justice not always done, is it? Uh, recently, back in January, we had this family, and it's going to be all in the news in time to come, because they're going to try those po two police officers that said they'd gone into a house and bought drugs where they had not. And they've had to throw out uh, a bunch of cases right now that were pending because this man's been with the force for 
30 some odd years and he'd been making up his own rules and laws as he goes and he said he had sent someone in but no one knows of any person that went in and uh, bought drugs from these folk uh, these folk were too too poor to be drug dealers <laughs> I had said it's sad but they killed a man and his wife they'd been married 20 some odd years uh, but you can't uh, judge the whole box by one bad apple, can you? But the tragic thing is, is these people lost their life because this guy, they kick the door down and go in and go to shooting. And uh, the guy retaliated. He wounded three or four of them, but he didn't kill them like they did him and his wife. But those things happen. We're still instructed to uh, pay homage to people that are in office. I got a little perturbed today. Linda and I are coming back from uh, Huntington, and I've never seen all these trips, these nine years we've been going, I've never seen as many law officers stopping people. And just every few miles, there'd be somebody stopped. I'm talking about continually writing tickets, people out writing tickets. And you go through some of those little towns up there. Uh, they were out writing tickets as usual do it, just as fast as they can. What they're doing is, <laughs> these people do it themselves, I guess, but they cause their insurance and everything to go up. And they're making a little money for their kitty there, for the town, what have you. And I hate to see the law abused like that. But what would we do, would we do without laws? We'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? We have to have them. Uh, but I got rather taken back at so many of them, and they do it on a regular basis, uh, but it's much more this time. Uh, but we're instructed to pray for our leaders, aren't we? We read a moment ago, and let's read again, First Timothy, uh, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Pray that God directs the, those folk, uh, that they, uh, those that make the laws and so forth. Pray that God gives us the individuals that he wants in the offices. In the history of Israel, we find that God allowed some good kings and some wicked kings, God allowed it to be in charge. And they had kings that would lead the nation away from God. And then we'd have one come back and uh, find the Bible and realize where they had uh, reached and they'd have to create a revival within the nation of Israel. And God gives us a record of them that we might profit from what happened to them. But uh, in the final analysis, the Lord told, teaches us that perilous times will come, that we'll be delivered up before the councils, and y'all don't forget that. If we're going to stand for the truth, and we've got to, if we don't stand for the truth, we'd, we better get out of business. Because the Lord's word is truth, isn't it? And if we don't take a stand with that, then uh, we're not doing what God asked us to do. And I can tell you this much the truth is going to be challenged. It's already challenged. Uh, I heard the other day that California was considering a law that would do away, even the King James Version, that would do away with any book that condemned the lifestyle of those sodomites. Two weeks ago, it was on the news. They were considering a law. And of course, that would kill the First Amendment, which we're going to read about. If you will, drop down and on, your, on page uh, uh, 
the bottom of your page, which says America's Founding Fathers. And let's read that together. America's Founding Fathers, which uh, with profound respect for religious liberty and indeed for all legitimate and personal rights of the governed, carefully and clearly limited the power of government protecting those rights in the United States Constitution and in the Bill of Rights. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which became effective on December the 15th, 1791. The very first of those protected rights, Amendment 1 says plainly, and you all remember this, I've got it highlighted. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or bridging the freedom of speech or of the press, and of the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And then it adds the same constitution which gives the humanistic news media the right to ridicule the Bible give Christians the right to preach the Bible and everything in it, not just what we like or don't like, everything in it. Since 1791, the battle for the constitutional freedom is clearly defined in the Bill of Rights, may never have been as obvious and important as it is right now in 2012 when that, this article was written. And that still holds true. It's the right that our forefathers fought, gave their lives for. The freedom of religion and the freedom of speech. And then the writer closed out this article there, referencing Hitler. Uh, some of us lived during Hitler's time. Uh, I remember well as a boy that World War II was going on. And Hitler was the main culprit. Uh, one of the main ones, Mussolini and Hitler. Mussolini was over in Japan, and Hitler was over Germany. But it says, in Hitler's Germany, the loss of freedom for one group meant the loss of freedom for every group. If Christians in America lose the right to preach and teach the tenets of their religious beliefs, Surely the members of the media are not so ignorant to think, as to think they cannot lose their freedom of press. Both are equal clauses in the same amendment. They can't take away our right to proclaim the Lord's word. And folk, if we can't proclaim the Lord's word, we can't proclaim anything because it's what counts. But the truth is going to be challenged again. Now, if you will, look up at, back up at Acts 5, 28 and 29. Saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name, meaning the name of Jesus. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The Jews were trying to exclude themselves from being responsible for the death of our Savior. And they were pointing an accusing finger at the apostles. And, uh, Peter point blank said, We've got to obey God rather than men. And folks, that's still true. It hasn't changed. Uh, these people that are living in an abominable life don't want to hear that. They want you to accept their ungodliness. But we've got to still preach the truth. God hates sin, but he loves a sinner. Never forget that part. But it, when it comes down to obeying man, as we are taught here to respect those that are in authority, when it comes to either God or man, then guess who we're supposed to yield to? 
and Boca is getting more and more that way. Uh, we're going to be forced to choose, take side, if you will. And I can tell you the side, the winning side is God's side. <laughs> we don't have any options, do we? I'm talking about as children of God. We've already taken his side. Jesus said, you for me or you against me? It can't be both ways. Either he's supreme in our life or he's not. We get to vote for him in that respect. And when we vote for him, we know he keeps all of his promises, doesn't he? He doesn't just blindly forget what he promised. I like it nowadays with all these uh, modern devices and everything being recorded, your own camera, wherever you go. Uh, now, if, if a crime occurs, they stop, especially around a business place, and ask who's got cameras up, what were they showing, what have you. Uh, and uh, these politicians of old made promises in the past, and they didn't know anybody recorded that, but these guys got to pull out these files and what have you, and, and there they are promising. Well, I didn't say that, but then, hey, they did say it. <laughs> over and over again. Uh, but if we vote for him, we won't be disappointed, I can tell you that much. If the Lord people today would let him uh, be the Lord of their life, then we'll be a lot better off than what we are. 